What is the secret to unlocking your full potential? What makes your idols any different than you? How do you become the person you've always wanted to be in life? This is where you get all of your questions answered. My name is Justin Shank, and I sit down with some of the most epic individuals who are changing the world with their actions in business and in life. We discuss how they did it, why they pushed themselves, and more importantly, how they were able to focus on continuous growth to achieve their dreams. Welcome to the Growth Now Movement. This week, I sit down with Rachel Peterson. If you don't know who my guest today is, you will find out soon. So you see, Rachel Peterson is the queen of social media, working with businesses, brands, influencers all around the world to grow and engage their audiences in a natural, organic way. Rachel is somebody who has really gone onto every single platform and owned it. From Instagram to Facebook and now TikTok, uh, you'll hear how she's been able to grow her audience and truly engage, talking about posts going viral uh, and then turning that into a seven-figure business. She has quite a fascinating story from a single mom on welfare to now running a multi-seven-figure business. Rachel is truly the American dream, the inspiration, and somebody you can all relate to. She's been featured in Inc., Entrepreneur, Funnel Hacker, Today Show, USA Today, and so many more places. Uh, she's just incredible. She also shares in this episode how she met her husband and they were married in 13 days. So you can tell this episode is going to be a entertaining, but also very informative. Now, before we get to the interview itself, I want to remind you guys that Growth Now Movement Live is right around the corner. So come hang out with me, Natalie Jill, Anthony Trucks, and all the other speakers that I've announced and about to announce in the near future here. Uh, It is going to be an epic day and a half for all entrepreneurs, all business owners, and every single person who is looking to level up in all areas of their life, including relationships and so much more. You guys are going to love it. Head over to GNMLive.com because tickets are on sale now and they will sell out. Again, that's GNMLive.com. I cannot wait to see you there. Now, without further ado, let's get into the episode with Rachel Peterson. Rachel, welcome to the show. Justin, thank you so much for having me. I mean, we've been connected on social media for quite some time since you're connected to the world on social media, and we'll get to that. But we both spoke at Terry Weaver's event in Orlando, and uh, I was like, okay, now now is the time. So really excited to have this chat. I think your journey has been incredible. What, you're bu- what you've already built and still building uh, is insanely impressive. But why don't we take a second and just have you introduce yourself of who is Rachel today, and then we'll unpack how you got there. Ooh, I like the way that you framed that because... Oh my gosh. I feel like the last four years of building my business has really helped to kind of refine, almost go back to like the basics of who I really am. Um, So who am I today? I am a mom to three amazing kids. I have a nine-year-old, five-year-old, and one and a half-year-old. I am married still after meeting my husband and getting married 13 days later. We're about to celebrate six years of marriage. Which is Um, insane. Isn't that, they legitimately is insane, I think. (laughs) Um, But it's been crazy to see like how much stronger our marriage has gotten over the last four years. So I'm really proud to say I'm a happy wife. Um, And then, you know what they say, happy wife, happy life, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Um, What else? I've really grown into becoming, um, I would say a leader. It's weird to describe yourself, but I've become a leader who really and truly wants to understand people. Um, I'm someone who identifies patterns, not just with people, but with trends, with society, um, patterns of thinking, patterns of behavior. I am also someone who has kind of discovered the weird definition of balance and how it doesn't look how you think it's going to look. And I am a social media, I I can't say that word, aficionado. I'm I'm obsessed with social media. (laughs) Some people call me the queen of social media. I just really love social media. So I, I guess that's the best way I can explain myself right now without using the usual cliche bio. Yeah, no, and and I love all of that. So let's talk about really quick, because I love talking about people's personal journeys as well. But 
but you met your husband and you were married in th- in 13 days. <laughs> like, let's talk about that for a second. Like, how did you like, I can't even decide what pants to wear 13 days from now, let alone getting married in 13 <laughs> days. Like, how, how did you even figure that out? Oh my gosh. Well, I will say that I had dated a bit and I was already a single mom. So I knew a little bit, I had experienced enough life. I think that I kind of had a feeling I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I knew what I didn't want. Um, and what's interesting is when I look back at all of my relationships before Paul, they were all just prepping me for what I was going to end up with, if that makes sense. And so it was almost like I was collecting this big list and I was like, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I know what it doesn't look like. And so through the process of elimination, when I met him, I went down kind of the list and I was like, okay, So I don't want someone mean. He's kind. Um, I don't want someone boring. He's hilarious. And I went down the list without actually pulling out like a paper list. And I was like, he's, he meets all of the the things I thought that I might, what what my future might look like. And it was so crazy, honestly, Justin, because, and I feel like crazy is literally the best word to explain it. But after a couple days, we went on our first official date and I was like, overwhelmed with love. And it was this really true, deep love. Some people are like, Oh no, that's probably just like hormones or whatever. But there was this moment where we were sitting on the couch and he like kissed my forearm. And I kid you not, I swear in that moment, I saw him like kissing our babies. I saw him kissing our grandkids. I saw him kissing our daughters on their wedding day. Um, and it was just this incredible moment where I was like, I see my entire future with this man and I don't know what it all looks like. I just know that it's right. No, I I love that. Like that's an incredible story. And obviously here we are. How many years later, six years later, you said six years later, two extra kids. So now we're at three kids, which is, which is crazy because at the same time that you're building a marriage where let's be honest, you're still getting to know each other, right? But you're married. You're still getting to know each other. You're creating children, you're creating human beings, but you're also creating a business. And so you started this business um, with no fallback plan, no backup options. Let's talk about that journey a little bit. And how did you even decide, number one, to be your own boss? And number two, then to build this massive company that you built? Oh, for sure. So I will say that when we got married, I was just fresh out of a breakup and kind of like a series of bad relationships. Like I'm not blaming anyone else for that. I think that I was definitely a a huge part of those bad relationships, not only attracting them, but then creating them. And so when I met Paul, I was honestly in a place of really like brokenness. Um, So confused about so many things, like not knowing who I could trust in life, not knowing if I could ever thrive and be like an incredible mom, not just like a mom that just barely gets by. And I didn't know like what stable relationships looked like. There was so much I needed to probably go through therapy for, but I didn't at that time. And when I met Paul, it was like, suddenly I had this like safe place to bloom. And he was so like gentle and patient and loving and fun through the process. And he just kept encouraging me and helping me to realize like, it's safe now. Like it's safe for you to evolve. You don't have to have all your walls up anymore. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, And it was a long process, but then it was about four and a half years ago. And I, I had been an alcoholic since I was like 19. So from 19 to 24, I was this just crazy alcoholic. And I woke up and went to work one day and suddenly I had this realization and almost like an audible voice that was like, step away from your alcohol, put it on the altar and your family will be safe. And I was like, okay, no brainer. And there was a second part to it. And it was, and if you do this, every single dream, hope, wish goal you had for your life will come true. And it was really clear. I mean, to me, it felt audible in that moment. And I don't know if it actually was, but it felt that way. Right. And so I, I gave up drinking and that was the when things started to happen. That was when like our truly our building of our life began. And so he was so patient because the first couple of years of our marriage, I mean, I, I struggled with alcohol so badly. Um, I wasn't even struggling. I just wasn't winning, if that makes sense. Sure. Totally. And, um, so when I gave up alcohol, I started building my business six months later because I just kept having this gut feeling. And then I, 
actually went into work and was written up for missing work when my daughter was sick. And like that same day, I remember seeing the president of the company and he's like, Oh, I'm leaving early. Cause I want to go be with my son. He's sick. And it just kind of clicked in my head. Wait a second. I'm building someone else's business so that they can be there for their kids when they're sick. Wait, what about me and my kids? Right. And that's when like it kicked into overdrive. I was like, it's time to build a business. Let's go. I don't know what this looks like, but it's time. Yeah. So you, you really had no idea. You're like, I know that I want that, but I don't know what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. So how, how and why social media? Like, how did that journey start? Because now, I mean, four years ago, it was a completely different world. I mean, now everybody says they're a social media expert. Everybody's buying the course to go then teach other people how to do it. And they're not even doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. So how four years ago <laughs> did you go, okay, I'm going to do this social media thing and I'm going to figure this out. By the way, really quick, I'm just like, you literally figure out every single social media that comes out. <laughs> like TikTok, which I'm on and I have one video on there and I've done nothing with it. Like you have millions and millions of views, right? So mm -hmm. that's just crazy to me. But, but how four years ago did you go, okay, I'm going to figure out the social media thing and make that my business? Ooh, I like that question. Well, one thing that's really interesting is I don't have a degree of any kind. Um, I didn't go to college for marketing. I, I didn't have like experience as a marketer. I mean, there are things that kind of led to some of the patterns of being a marketer. But I remember when I was 19 years old and my sister, this is so crazy. I, you know, when you get like a, a clear vision or like that call and you don't answer it mm -hmm. and you're like later on in life, you're like, Oh my gosh, that was the first attempt, but I never listened to it. Um, when I was like 19 years old, my sister, who's quite a bit younger than me comes home and she's like, Rachel, have you heard about this book platform by Michael Hyatt? And I was like, no. And she's like, he's saying that you need to build your platform. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't <laughs> literally, she's like, no, Rachel, you've got to build a platform, like go build a platform on Twitter. And I was like, I don't understand like what that means or what that looks like. And she's like, just read the book. It'll help you. And I totally ignored it. Isn't that so crazy? Like that is, it was like, was a, here's your sign, Rachel, listen. Yes. And looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have started this like five years sooner, six years sooner actually, but I didn't. And that's totally fine. But it got me thinking. And so I started going on Twitter and I would watch reality TV shows, probably a little drunk. Okay. Probably a lot drunk, but I would watch <laughs> these reality shows and I'd like tweet at the people on the show. And I was like, I want to connect with them. And one thing that started happening is they started reaching back. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a world different outside of the world that I know and I can connect to it with social media. This is crazy. And I actually started a friendship with one of the producers of The Bachelor and we ended up emailing each other for years, like just touching base and connecting. It was so crazy. And so that was my first like foray into social media. And when I became a hairstylist, I knew that when I posted pictures, like we'd get more clients, but I didn't understand like how to truly build. And so I knew a little bit about social media, but not enough to like consider myself an expert. And instead of taking someone else's course, because to be honest, we just didn't really have spare money. So instead of taking a course, because I couldn't justify the idea of paying for a course on it. I started like listening to Amy Porterfield's podcast and the founder podcast back in the day and social media examiners, different podcasts. And I would just listen to all these podcasts while I was working until I started to figure some things out and then I would test it. Um, so when I started, I don't even know that I was that good. I was just trying and I didn't give up. Yeah, no, I love that. And so I, there's a story and, and forgive me for not remembering all of it. You taught, you touched okay. on it when you were speaking at Terry's event about, about your wedding ring. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like your big aha moment of like, holy crap, like this is kind of how you break through on social media. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So when I was building my clientele, I did it for six months before I replaced my income, which was just like the craziest day for me realizing I think it's time. Mm. And I think that when I made that decision, it's almost like it unlocked a part of my brain that was like, okay, now it's time to play big. And so I literally sat down. It was like a weekend. Um, I sat down and I was like, I'm going to write the post that goes viral. 
And I wrote this big heartfelt post about my wedding ring and how my wedding ring was small, but it represented my love and our incredible whirlwind story and how everyone was pressuring me to upgrade, but I was like, I'm not going to upgrade it. And so I wrote this post and I literally looked at Paul and I was like, I was kind of joking, but not. And I was like, that's the one that's going to go viral. And you know, he, I'm sure, I don't even know what he was thinking. I've actually never asked him. He might've thought she might be serious, but she also might be crazy, but either way I'm in for the ride. (laughs) Um, it's too late. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if I want to ask the difference. Um, and so I, I boosted it. Like I didn't even know how to run Facebook ads, but I boosted it for 20 bucks. And as I was submitting the notice to my nine to five, my one month notice, this post went like incredibly viral and it, over just a couple like weeks, it reached 11.3 million people and was picked up by like Cosmopolitan, Glamour, The Daily Mail, Huffington Post, like almost every single online publication that I'd ever dreamed of being in. And on one Sunday, like the Today Show is calling me, Justin. I thought it was a joke. I literally <laughs> thought I was being pranked by my friends, but it was literally the Today Show interviewing me. And so that was kind of the sign, like you've got this, like you understand what this is. Now you have to go deeper to truly understand the patterns behind people and psychology and social media as a whole. You know, I I love this because there are so many people um, in this world who can, they can get the 15 minutes of fame. They can get the post that goes viral. They can get on the Today Show or whatever television show you could possibly be on. Um, But you made this into a life. You made this into two multi seven figure businesses. You really spun it into something great. So how were you able to kind of do that just from this experience? Because I think so many people kind of miss out on that opportunity. You know, I'll be totally honest. I made a huge mistake when I went viral. And that was that I wasn't ready for it. Um, I'd always counted on like just doing the work and I had a feeling that there was something on the other side of it, but I didn't expect to go viral worldwide. And I'm just being totally honest with that. It was kind of crazy, but I just, I I had this huge opportunity in front of me and, and I think I was so overwhelmed by the experience that I didn't know, okay, what do I do now? And so all these people were trying to position me as like the girl who knows how to make people go viral. And is that something I know how to do? Yeah, absolutely. I understand virality and I've helped a lot of people do it. But there was this kind of like incongruency in that message and in my desires. Mm -hmm. Like I love helping people build businesses, but to say that I make people go viral that's not quite fully the whole story. And that is selling someone, a not a pipe dream, but something that they're probably not prepared for. Um, and the reason I say that is because I was shocked by my first real encounter with trolls and haters. I mean, there was one article on me in the city pages in Minnesota that was like ripping me apart, everything from the color of my nail polish, the shape of my nails to how stupid my post is, how there was even like people saying I was a gold digger. And I was like, you clearly didn't read my post because I said my (laughs) husband was a window washer, you know, not that he owned a window washing company. There was just so many things that were like ripping me apart. And this is in my own state. And I was like, okay, this kind of hurts a little, but that really taught me how powerful virality is and how prepared you need to be for what is on the other side of it, good and bad. Yeah. You know, one thing I'm getting from you is how strong you're able to be to stand up for yourself Mm -hmm. um, and not just allow life happen to you instead of, you know, you, you make life happen for you instead of to you. And, and, you know, I hear this story of people tried to push me to be the person that can make you go viral. That didn't feel right. So I stood up for that. Um, How are, what happened in your life that allowed you to be so strong in your conviction of who you are? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, it's interesting because I don't think I really discovered that until I honestly got married. And for a long time, when I was working in different jobs and when I was going to school before I dropped out, I was definitely easily influenced, even though. I was always kind of a leader. There was a part of me that was so influenced by what other people thought. And I wanted people to like me so badly that I truly like lost my own voice. And so I remember the the last job I had before I got married, I wanted to fit in so badly with the people 
at this, um, at the salon and I would try to connect with everybody and I wanted everyone to like me and it just came off insincere. And that's when I realized like, wait a second, I'm not being myself. And that job was the most miserable <laughs> I've ever been in a job. That was literally every single day I would wake up and I was like, I hate this job. And I had never had that attitude before. Like I loved my job at the gas station, loved my job at Taco Bell, loved my job as a server. But this one job in particular, I absolutely just dreaded going to every single day. And it was because I wasn't being myself. And so when I was talking to one person, I would try to be like super cool. And when I was talking to another person, I was trying to be like, you know, super um, like a a student top performer. (laughs) And even though those were all facets of me, I was so blown around with the wind that like, I didn't know what does my voice actually sound like? And so when I got married, Paul was like, I think you just need to leave this job. Like you're so unhappy. Like, let's just find you a new job. Who cares if you make less money? Like we'll figure it out, but you cannot be this unhappy. And so when I left, I I started kind of discovering, okay, here's who I am. And I will tell you, I mean, I'm sure you've experienced this, but anyone listening, if you have not yet gone through the fire of building a business, oh my gosh, it is like, it is like 50 years of therapy and all of the crash (laughs) courses in personal development in one building a business will put you through literally the refining fire of life. Um, and that's how I really found my voice was building a business. Yeah. And, and you're a hundred percent right with that. And it's funny because that's when people give up, right? When they start, they're like, Oh, I'm going to build a business and they don't realize how hard it is. And the things that kind of you encounter, you know, while you're building it, because all people end up seeing is the reward, right? They see you now Mm -hmm. traveling the world, speaking on stages, you know, multi seven figures, just bought a new house. They see that, but they don't see what you went through to to be able to do that. Um, You know, and, and, you know, something I like about you is that you, you own the term boss, um, it's in so much that you do. You have Boss Con, which is your event in Minnesota. And the, for those Midwestern people that are looking for Midwest, not Midwest. Yeah, Midwest. Okay, th- okay good. Yes. <laughs> so, so in the Midwest, people that are looking for an incredible event, obviously there's Boss Con. Um, and then you, I, you have a new book out too, right? Called I'm the Boss, which I love. I'm the Boss. Thank you. It's- so what made you, what made you want to write a book? Was it just like, that's what's next? Or was there something calling you to do that? Great questions. So there was a whole combination of things. I actually started and stopped so many variations of books. Like I have probably more half written books than most people do in their whole life um, from the last two years, just hanging out in my Google Drive. And that was from all the times that I attempted to write a book because I thought it's what was the next step. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've always known I was going to have multiple books and that people were going to say, like, this book impacted me. But the interesting thing is I actually wrote I'm the boss and then it was sitting there as a fully finished book in my drive and I set it aside, I think for like probably eight months. And then right before BossCon came around, I suddenly felt this like urge to go to my drive and look at the book again. And as I went back and read it, I was like, holy cow, especially after this year, this incredible, painful, intense, tough year of blood, sweat, and tears, this book is the right book. So I went through and just updated the things based on what I had learned this year. And I was like, now is the time. This is the book. This is going to impact people. And it was a lot smaller than most books are. Um, But as every time I tried to expand it, I was like, no, the message of this book is short for a reason. Um, the most powerful things come in tiny packages like diamonds and dynamite. And so does I'm the boss, the book. And so as I wrote it, I was like, as I finished it up, I was like, this is it. This is the time. This is the right message. People need this. And I've already seen like the feedback come back that people are like, this is exactly the book I needed. Mm, I, I love that. And so talk, talk to me a little bit more about what's inside of this book. What's inside of this diamond that people need to get to What's the message yeah. behind what you're trying to say with the book? So one of the things that I'm the boss does is it's the first definitely in a series that really identifies kind of a lot of the programming we've had throughout our lives. Um, That was one thing that was really hard for me to understand is that a lot of the programming and teaching, I know programming is a strong word, but a lot of the teaching and upbringing we have doesn't prepare us for success on our own. It prepares us to be 
um, factory workers or people who are um, kind of cogs in a machine of corporate. And I'm not dissing uh, jobs. I'm not dissing people who are employees. What I'm saying is there are a lot of people who are too scared to take the step in faith because they've been so programmed to believe that you have to have a safety net, that your resume is your net worth. Um, All these different things that we believe because it's what we're brought up to believe. Um, Wait until you're retired to travel. You know what I mean? There's so many things that we're programmed to think our truth. Um, And so as I wrote this book, it really breaks down that programming and kind of explains like all of the beliefs that we have that are false and how you can break through them. I love all of that stuff. Like it sounds absolutely amazing. I'm going to have to grab a copy of it, obviously, uh, (laughs) because it sounds really, really incredible. Now, obviously with everything you've built, it's really kind of been because of social media and you see the power of it. You see what people can do with it for their brands, for their business and all the stuff in between. What would be a tip from you, the, the queen of social media, that somebody can go out there and really begin to build a following? What would you say like the first step is? Ooh, so the very first step is going to be to sit down and don't touch a computer. Um, I know that that totally goes counter to everything that we think, but the very first thing you want to do is go really deep within yourself and ask yourself, who am I and what do I want to bring to the world? That is hands down the best thing I've ever done. Otherwise you end up like me in the job right before I got married not sure of who I am, what my purpose is. And not that you have to have it all figured out, but the pieces that you have figured out, like write it all down. Um, Take a moment and just truly let it all out. Like what, who do you want to impact? What do you want to share with people? If you were on a stage and had to speak for 30 minutes, what would you tell the 16 year old version of yourself? That's kind of the first thing that I always recommend is being really clear on your why and your purpose. Then from there, Get really clear on the people you want to serve and really do a deep dive into the psychographics behind the demographics. What are they feeling? Why are they frustrated? What what message do you have that they need at this moment in time? And that's the very first thing that I recommend. Um, But from the actual opening the computer standpoint, really choose one or two platforms and nail those down first. There's not necessarily a right or wrong platform because every single platform is useful in a different way. Um, I'm a big fan of saying like, pick your favorites first, like do the ones that are easy to you first. You can succeed on every single platform if you like it and put time into it consistently. So pick one or two and go really deep, respond to every comment, connect deeply, put great messages out there that deliver value before you ever try to expand or go wide. Mm. I love that. So what is, what's your take on the future of TikTok? <laughs> it's going to be big. <laughs> you think? Um, I do. I really, truly believe it. Uh, I have this pretty strong theory. I actually haven't really said this much um, like publicly, so I guess this would be like breaking news. I really think Instagram and Facebook are on their decline and going to not be a thing pretty soon. What do you think? Um, so I believe that about Facebook. I don't know. I don't know so much about Instagram. Mm. I don't know. Um, I hate Twitter. I'll tell you that. Like, I think everybody's just <laughs> shouting on Twitter and nobody's listening. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, obviously it's tough for me to, so my take, I mean, you know more than I do, but I've always said about like Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram is that they're, I think they're more than anything. I think Facebook will evolve into something different. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's a media company of some kind or whatever, cause I know they tried with Facebook watch or whatever it was called. Um, their, their television thing, which I don't think it did well. Um, but you know, I think it'll evolve into something else, but that's just my take. I think it, I, Instagram is my favorite, so I don't, I don't ever want it to go away. Um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, but I can't do TikTok I can't do these stupid dance moves that these kids are doing I don't want to do it I bet you totally could <laughs> it would be the most embarrassing thing for me to do and then for people to watch they would also feel embarrassed with me yeah I will say so I obviously do some of the dance trends um, which is actually really hard for me because I just don't feel like I'm young and cool anymore. And so it takes a lot of effort and I have to like show my team after I finish it. And I'm like, 
how cringy is this? And if they're like, no, it's actually good. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll put it up. Or else if it's like, <laughs> you know, so I, I show people my videos and I'm like, just let me know how bad is this? And they're like, okay, it's yeah. Re-record that please. Yeah. Um, but the thing about TikTok is you don't have to do dance trends. Like it's one way to explode, but there's so many people who are crushing it on TikTok that are like a little older and business professionals. For example, there's an attorney that's crushing it on TikTok and I love watching him. Um, the dentist, I love watching him. He's a dentist who is super famous on TikTok. Um, Will Smith just joined TikTok and he's not doing any dances. Um, I love watching adults thriving on this platform and sometimes just totally avoiding the trends and finding their own way to go about TikTok. So you don't have to do dances, but it definitely just makes the process a lot faster. Sure. No. And that totally makes sense. And I, and I love that take and I'm terrified that Instagram is going to go away because I actually enjoy it from also from a viewer standpoint, not only just posting, just from that's my favorite platform to look at. Um, but we'll see. Right. And, and so if it fails in the near future, we'll go back to this episode and be like, she really does know her shit. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm but telling that, you. It's wild. I hope not, but we'll, we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting to kind of see what, what takes its place. And maybe it is TikTok, or maybe it is something else that we haven't seen yet. Um, but, but I'm excited to kind of see where it all goes and what it'll do for, um, us as business owners, but also us as humanity as well, because I think it has its pros and cons, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I will say that there's some things that TikTok is going to, that they'll eventually get figured out. For example, like if a comment is abusive or cyberbullying, you can't delete comments which mm. I was just thinking about it. And obviously I have a pretty thick skin. So like that doesn't bother me. I mean, I had one video go viral and it went viral because teens were roasting me. So they were like, um, someone come get their mom. Okay, Karen, shut up, Karen. No one asked you. And I was like, okay, you know, at least I'm getting eyeballs. And so I just rocked with it, even though it was really, it could have been painful for most people. But I'm really thinking about like the the mental well-being of the teens that are on this platform and having one video go viral with people roasting you, that would be a lot to handle because there are days where people roasting me in comments literally feels too much for me. And so I just can't imagine being a teenager dealing with that, but I'm excited as TikTok evolves because I have this feeling just with their massive growth and their ability to understand the market that they're going to evolve faster than Instagram is now that Instagram has Facebook behind it. Mm, that's interesting. No, and I love that take. So Rachel, obviously because of this podcast, I get to talk to some of the most successful people on the planet, however you want to define success. So my question for you is, what is your definition of success and what are three things you do every single day to ensure that for yourself? Ooh, okay. So there are a couple different things that define success for me, but if I were to try to explain it as one like concise little summary I would say that it is doing exactly what I love and impacting the world on my own terms every single day. That's mm. the best way I can explain it. Um, and three things I do every single day to ensure that. Can I say five or do I have to say three? I can't, I can't trim <laughs> two. You're the first person to go five. So if you want to do I, five, absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm the boss of this response. I'm just kidding. No, I'm, <laughs> I, but I can't trim down two. Okay, let's do five. So the first thing is I give myself self care. Um, I imagine that like success, uh, growth, every good thing is like this pyramid of champagne glasses. You've seen that like in Great Gatsby, right? Yep. Where they start yep. pouring the champagne on the top. And you are that top glass in the champagne tower. So if you're not full, nothing underneath you is going to be full. You have to fill yourself first. If you have like leaks in that glass or if you're missing the top glass, it, it just doesn't work the same way. So I always pour into myself first every single day with self-care. Then the second thing I do is I immediately ask, how can I serve people today? Usually that's in the form of giving value or 
uh, building relationships. It's uh, going a little above and beyond for people. So serving people is the second thing that I do. The third thing I do is how can I drive the bottom line? Because I do run a business and I have to make sure that money is coming in or else this would just be a really expensive hobby. Right. Uh, number four is delivering excellence every single day. That is huge for me because sales are great. But if you aren't honestly asking yourself, am I delivering true excellence to my customers and my clients? then honestly, it's all going to fall apart. Some of the people are really good at selling themselves and terrible at delivery. And so we work yeah. on that literally uh, <laughs> every single day. Um, and then the fifth one is one that's kind of like my end of the day. And that's I educate myself every single day on whatever I want to learn about. So I have a stack at any given time of like 20 books. Uh, and I'll sit down and read an entire book in a day. Uh, I do that quite a bit, but I love learning so much. I love it. So what's the last book you read? The last book I read, the last book I touched was Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson. I started mm -hmm. reading that this morning. The last complete book was The Shadow Effect by Deepak Chopra. Nice. Very, very was, cool. Yeah. Have you read that book? No, I have not. Um, I would love to check it out though. It sounds amazing. It's intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I imagine. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's all about shadow work and all that stuff. Yeah. So if you're familiar with that, it's a really neat book. Um, Marianne Will Williamson is in it and um, Debbie Ford too. So they each write a chapter, which is really, really neat. That is cool. Yeah. I'll have to check mm -hmm. it out. I'm, I'm very familiar with that. So um, okay. I'll have to check it out for sure. I appreciate that. So Rachel, how? let's get to the important stuff. How do people get a hold of you? <laughs> how do they work with you? How do they attend BossCon? Get your book, all the good stuff. Awesome question. So everything you need to know is on my website, which is rachelpeterson.com. It's all E's and a D in my last name. You can literally link to, I have tons of like free content, free courses, free trainings, free videos. Um, and then I link to all my social on my website. So that's the easiest way to find me everywhere is just start on my website, rachelpeterson.com and you'll find everything you need to know. It is S-E-N at the end of Peterson. How many people spell your last name wrong? Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, by the way, if I, I did spell it wrong at first when I tried to find you on iTunes, like all the shows that you've done as guests, yep. and many, many people have listed you as S-O-N, just to let you know. Um, <laughs> I know. Isn't that crazy? I reach out crazy. to them and I'm like, you need to change this, but they never listen. So you want to know what's really interesting? Um, the moment someone misspells my last name, I don't respond to their messages first anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's the only thing where I'm like, I just want you to spell my last name right, please. Um, so, but once I say it, then you know it, it's Rachel Peterson. I'll ease in a D. That's it. Nobody spells my last name correctly. That's because it's pronounced shank, but it has all these extra letters in it and an E yes, and all this other stuff. Um, but so what, after I say to people, look, just pronounce it right. That's all I really care about. Uh, and it's like a prison shank. And then they never forget. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. So that's, so that's it. <laughs> so, uh, it's like a so, prison shank. <laughs> it's terrible, but it, it, it sticks in their head. Like you'll never forget now. I love it. That's great. <laughs> no, for sure. No, obviously, guys, seriously, go check her out. Uh, she is insanely smart when it comes to this stuff. Any kind of direction you want on social media, she's your girl, and she is certainly the boss. So make sure you check out her book. Now, Rachel, uh, I've done hundreds of interviews, and I wrap up every single interview with this one question, and that is, in your life, what has been your biggest moment of growth? Ooh, what has been my biggest moment of growth? It was this year, without a doubt. Um, this year, one of the most challenging business things happened, but it wasn't just business. It was really personal. And I'm not going to dive into details, but it was something that didn't just hurt in the moment. It reopened like all of my childhood, like wounds and fears and everything. And part of me wanted to like run from it or pretend I was strong or muscle through it. Like I have for so many years, but this was the year where I said, it's all right, I guess it's time. Let's face them all. Let's go, you know what I mean? Head first and say, all right, are these fears founded or are they unfounded? Um, are these wounds able to be healed? Is there forgiveness that needs to happen? Uh, what was my role to play in those things? And so we really tackled everything head, head first. And it was the most painful and rewarding year of my life. Mm. 
I love that. Rachel, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and your journey to the great successes that you've built. Um, you are certainly the boss and just thank you so much for, for coming on. Justin, thank you so much for having me. This was seriously such a long time coming. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Growth Now movement. This is how you can really help me out. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. And let's grow this movement to epic heights. And it's all going to be because of you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.